Hello everybody, I'm Nora. Today we are gonna be making some shirts into a quilt because you all know how much I love to use what I already have on hand. These are very lightweight and summery, so it's gonna be a very summery, lightweight quilt. I'm not gonna put any batting in it, which actually may mean that it's not officially a quilt. I think the official definition of a quilt uh, is that you have some batting, something in the middle, and this will not have this, uh, but I'm gonna call it a quilt because I'm quilting pieces together, right? I'll sew around the edge, right sides together, flip it, and top stitch. So typically I do the binding around, along the quilts and have the batting. This is gonna be a much faster project and the quilt itself will be just really lightweight and can just fling it around and it'll be beautiful. Let's go ahead and lay out these shirts, see what we have, cut them into squares, and then we'll sew those squares together. Here are my shirts here, and I'm going to start by just cutting off all of the seams. And that way I'll be able to spread out the actual full pieces and see how much fabric I have to work with and to see what size squares make the most sense. So all my pieces are cut out, all of the edges are trimmed off, and one thing that I've noticed uh, in cutting is that some of these fabrics are much silkier than the other fabrics. So for example, this blue stripe and this white and red stripe are much silkier. They're much, they're much more slippery, even though they're same, the same weight as these other fabrics. So these are... Um, they just feel more like honest cotton. These probably have more polyester in them, I would guess. So it'll be interesting to see how these sew together. I've also decided that I'm gonna cut my squares eight and a half inches in diameter, which after you account for the one fourth seam allowance, the squares will be eight inches. So as I'm trying to cut this, I, had, I just cut this into a straight line, but now that I'm trying to line it up, with a line on the cutting board, because this fabric is a little bit stretchy and a little bit slippery, it's really hard to get that perfect line to cut my next line. Now, what I might do is get rid of these pieces that are slippery, which would be this, which would leave me with only three fabrics. So these ones here should cut fine. Uh, but this would be a very different blanket than I was initially thinking. But that might be okay. I kind of like these together. So I'm going to cut these first and see how many squares I can get out of these and see how big that blanket would be. In these three fabrics, I was able to get a total of 25 squares, which is perfect because then I can do five by five. I also have all of these leftover bits. I have quite a few of them. And so what I was thinking, just to make the quilt a little bigger, these, these squares are eight and a half. So to account for the seam allowance, they'll be eight inches wide when they're done. So that times five blocks wide would be um, 40 inches. So I'd like the quilt to be a little bit bigger than 40 inches wide. And so what I'm thinking is I got this sheet on clearance. So I'm gonna use this for the back, but I also thought that maybe I would do a really thin border thinner than you than thinner than this but a thin border along the quilt so I have my pieces I'm going to have them going opposite ways so it kind of look like this and you know like this kind of thing and then it would be a nice thin a thin border along the edge of the quilt and then I would use the bits to make outside sashing along the whole thing as well here I've laid out all of the squares in the way that I think that I want them on the blanket. And so I've made sure that no ones that are touching are the same color pattern and that I've gone vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, all the way around the whole uh, quilt. So now what I'll do is I will chain piece these together. So I will fold these right sides together and sew along here. Again, sew along here. I will sew along this line, and then when I open these up, I'll have a set that are sewn together of twos, and then I'll sew these to these, and similar all around the quilt, these to these. So I wanted to show you 
this glue that I'm using. This is fabric glue, and because this fabric is so thin, it does tend to kind of shift around, even though it's not as slippery as that other shirt fabric, this does still, still shift. So what's really helpful for me, and sometimes I'll even do this with um, long strands of regular quilting fabric, uh, just to make sure everything lines up and, and stays aligned under my sewing machine, is I will, let me move this back for a minute. I have my two pieces, right sides together. This is the line that I'm gonna sew on. I take my glue, I just put a dot in the middle, a dot at each end, and I kind of do one in between those dots as well. And then I take my top fabric and sandwich it on to the glue. So as you can see, I've been chain piecing these together under the machine. I had lined up all of those, those uh, pairs over on my floor and I put the pairs together with these little clips so I can keep track of which, which side I'm going to sew. And so I'll put my next, my next square under the machine and continue on with the chain. And then I would take my next one, put a little bit of glue, and then continue to send it under until all my pairs have been sewn. Then I will trim apart, do that just for fun here, all of the sections here. And then you open it up and, and iron your seam to one side or the other. I've pieced together all of my center blocks. I have also cut out the gray sashing from the sheet fabric, and I'm gonna attach that next. I'm also gonna start creating a sashing of the shirt fabric by sewing some of those scraps together. But I'm very pleased with how this particular block set has come together. I think it's looking really nicely. You can see a little bit of pattern in there, which was kind of by accident, because I was really just trying to make sure that no two fabrics connected and in doing that I kind of ended up with this this interesting pattern here so I'm very pleased and I'm going to keep going next I'm going to put on those borders it is the next day and last night I went ahead and finished making and attaching the border so here is the top of my quilt I have also cut out the back of my quilt which is this nice gray fabric which matches the sashing on the front of the quilt. So that'll be nice. So the next step is I'm gonna sew these right sides together, leaving about a four inch opening. I have my blanket here with the right sides sewn together. I sewed all the way around, leaving the four inch gap. And now I'm just gonna go around and trim off the edges, each one of the four edges. So your little scrap will end up being a little triangle, a little trim right there. And I just go around, do that for all all of the sides. So right now the outside of my blanket is on the inside and once I trim these I will flip the blanket right side out. So let's find the hole. Here it is. I'm just going to stick my hand right inside and try and grab the opposite end of the blanket and pull it through. So while I'm flipping this I'll just say I did not enjoy sewing with this fabric. This was not easy fabric, and I'm just kind of dying to go back to sewing with quilting cotton. This is not a beginner project, I've come to learn. The fabric was finicky. Uh, it was really difficult to get the stripes to line up. Um, the fabric was a little bit slippery because it was so thin. It was just difficult to sew with. So I wouldn't use shirts of this weight again. I probably wouldn't use shirts again at all, to be honest. But if I were to make another shirt blanket, it would probably be um, a, a button-up work shirt that's a little bit heavier, that has that starch in it. I think that would be much easier to use. What I would use for sure, and I actually in the future will probably do this absolutely, is uh, flannel shirts. So flannel is a fabric that's very easy to work with and is one of my favorite things to quilt with. So that's something that, that a beginner could definitely do. Um, so I have now put this right side out, and the last thing I need to do, let's take a look at how it's, 
how it's doing here. So I still have this hole in it right here and I need to close that up. So the way I'm gonna close that up is I'm gonna tuck in the, seam, the seams into the blanket here and then I'm going to top stitch, which means I'm going to sew a line right along the edge here, which will close this up, but I'm not only gonna go over the hole, I'm gonna go around the whole blanket and that will help the blanket lie nice and flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then we'll be done. It's finished, I top stitched it. So I'll go ahead and take some pictures in a minute so that you can see it in all of its greatness. But it has this great lightweight feel to it. It's really super light and airy. I think of this as the perfect beach blanket because it is large enough for multiple people to sit on, but it's small enough that you really could, you know, pick it up off the beach, shake out the sand, and as you, you know, head in for a little beverage, use it as a little scarf for the for the air conditioning or something right and I think it looks really good I'm really happy with it not all the stripes are lining up exactly how I would like if you know if I the perfectionist in me does see the flaws you know but for the beach I think it's perfect so thanks for coming on this journey with me and post some pictures if you made your own blanket out of shirts I'd love to see in the comments and don't forget to subscribe I'll see you next time bye